and that is how the episode ends. That little part was not in the manga, but of course we're adding little bits and pieces of Muzan because we know that Muzan is coming, he's looking for Nezuko, he's trying to find the Hashira, Obiashiki. Hello there my fandom friends! Today I will be talking about the similarities and differences between the manga and anime of episode 6 of the Hashira training arc, The Strongest of the Demon Slayer Corpse. So if you've been watching my breakdown videos from the past couple of weeks, you know that we've been on book 15 for a very long while. We finally moved up in the world, we are finally on manga 16, so I'm so excited to be showing off a new cover, new art, talking about new stuff from the anime that's not in the manga. That's kind of the purpose of why I'm making these episodes, is I'm breaking down the similarities and the differences, so that if you're not a manga reader, you can see what they've added into the anime without reading the manga if this isn't for you. And there will be no spoilers unless I say spoiler warning at the end of the video, which sometimes I do, so be on the lookout for that if I end up talking about spoilers or just my predictions for things to come, that will be at the end of the video. But before I start talking about the episode, I wanted to quickly explain that I am doing a Demon Slayer Hashira cosplay challenge, where I am cosplaying all nine Hashira and I need your help deciding who I cosplay next. And so in round one, Obanai won, and so I will be cosplaying Obanai next because that is the Hashira that all of you wanted me to cosplay. Round two will be starting soon. I'm going to link a video up here so that you can vote for which Hashira you want to see me cosplay next. And basically it's just a voting system, so check that out if you want to learn more. So jumping right into this episode, we actually cover about one and a half chapters worth of story from the manga. So we get through all of chapter 134 and then a little bit through chapter 135. Again, this is in manga 16 now, we have moved on. This episode also was very manga heavy. There's not too much anime original scenes, but the stuff that is different, I will be talking about. The start of this episode and the start of this manga section is basically just Guillaume explaining the three requirements for moving past his training. And so of course we have the waterfall, we have lifting the logs, and then we have pushing the boulder. So all of this was completely the same from the manga to the anime adaptation. We do get a little bit more of Murata in this scene. In the manga you can totally tell it's him, but we just get a little bit more context of him. We can clearly see that it's him, we remember him from the spider arc back in season one. So that's exciting to see Murata again. Of course we know that he is another important part of the book just as a side character. A little detail here that wasn't really picked pictured in the manga just because it's a little hard to depict that in art style in a book, but we get Zenitsu dashing to the boulder using his breathing style, which was really cool. So we got to see kind of that lightning speed of him zooming to that boulder as fast as he could. I really like that added detail. So we get the three little faces going against the screen. It's kind of like their little chibi forms with that iconic music in the back. We actually got this from season one, I think it was episode 14 or 15, right before the spider arc, when the three boys are just goofing off. And so I thought that that little added scene in this episode, which was not in the manga, added just another piece of the goofiness of these boys that we got back from season one. It's bringing it full circle, and so that was just another little cute thing that they added. We jump to Inosuke struggling under the waterfall. He kind of gets waterboarded, can't breathe. This part was basically word for word, scene for scene in the manga. And all of these scenes basically in the manga, there's just not as many panels, obviously from what they show in the anime. So yes, they're very similar, but in the anime, obviously they're showing more context. They're showing more angles, sometimes even more speaking parts, dialogue. And so there's little minor differences like that. Again, we are getting more content of Murata and he's basically telling Tanjiro, if you keep chanting, yes, it's also, you know, related to what Guillaume is wanting us to do, but it's also making sure that you're conscious. So for other people who are watching you, for yourself, basically just chants that we know you're alive. <laughs> and if you're wondering what the nanbatsu phrase that they're saying means is it's a Buddhist term for kind of recognizing Buddha, 
kind of opening your heart to receive things from Buddha. And so that was just something I Googled on the side because I'm not familiar with that kind of word or what that means in Japan. And so I was just interested in delving a little deeper into that. During the scene, we kind of get a little more insight on Murata's time under the waterfall, how long he's been struggling with it. So this part was in the manga, but there is a slight difference in the word choice. So in the manga, it explains that Murato was under the waterfall for one koku before he could continue. So that means 30 minutes, but in the anime, they actually changed it to two hours. So that's a lot more time than just 30 minutes. So I thought that was an interesting way to kind of bump up the time of that waterfall scene when Murata is explaining that to Tanjiro. We are next followed by a scene that was very similar in the manga and anime where all of the trainees are kind of just sitting around a fire. In the anime, they basically just added more kind of basic conversation elements. Something that we see is that Inosuke is talking about how strong Yome is and how he doesn't doubt it. And we see a really quick flash of his imagination remembering how strong Yome was because he basically just slammed him into the ground. Now this part was in the manga, but it was actually just a side panel next to a chapter title from manga 15. And so it wasn't exactly in the storyline, but it was just kind of a picture off to the side. Now this season has been doing a really great job of adding in all of those scenes. We've seen almost all of them. And I think we're gonna continue seeing that basically just little cute pictures that weren't added into the story, but they're adding them into the anime story, which I think is really cool. After this, we get yet another scene of Zenitsu just getting really upset at Tanjiro. This was the exact same from the manga. And then that is followed by a really goofy scene. One of my favorite, honestly, from the episode, it's Tanjiro and Zenitsu having a really horrible time under that waterfall. We see that Zenitsu is slowly getting deeper and deeper into the water. He is being rushed down the river. Tanjiro is like zooming after him. The music is goofy. Their facial expressions are goofy. They have like one brain cell going because their brains are just fried from the cold, the pressure of the waterfall, the training. It was just so funny. This part was actually only like one little panel in the manga, so adding more to that scene I think was really cute. It just kind of showed that these boys are still goofy even back from season one. It's just reassuring us that yes, these boys at heart are the same even though they've been through so much, which I think is really sweet. The manga and the anime follow suit in this scene as well, where they both move into the log training, which is super fast, which is the second phase of Guillaume's training. And then we jump into the boulder training, which is the third and final phase of the training. And so in the anime, they added a really cool transition of the boulder actually morphing into the moon. And we jump back to the eyeballs that we've been seeing in past episodes we see that once again, they're being spied on. So this scene actually did happen in the manga, but it actually happened a bit further into chapter 134. So we'll come back later when this actually happens in the manga. Um, in the manga, they basically just continue on with the boulder training, the Genya scene, things like that. And so in the anime, we're just getting this scene a little bit faster. Before we jump into seeing Muzan with Nakime, we actually get to see more of her spying on different slayers in the village, just normal average people in the village. We get to see another female slayer, which was really cool. I kind of talked a little bit about that in the last episode when I talked about open ice training and getting to see finally a female trainee because it's always just been boys up until this point. My favorite part of this Nakime scene was actually a really key small detail that wasn't in the manga because it's not really something again that you can show in color in the manga since it's just black and white but it was this kind of glowing of her hair as she was searching and in like a specific location that Muzan was asking for and so it just showed that kind of like her hair was resemblant to and symbolic to those eyeballs looking for different things in certain places. Of course, we can see her hair is super long. It's always draped upon like all of the walls of the infinity castle surrounding her. We then jump back to Tanjiro with the boulder. Basically, this is the exact same as the manga, but in the anime, we get to see more of Tanjiro struggling with the boulder. And all of these added scenes of Tanjiro struggling, I've talked about this in past videos I've made with the recent episodes, but we're getting a lot more content of Tanjiro struggling through this training. 
And I think that's just to remind us that yes, it's easy for him, but he is still struggling. He's not, you know, a superhero by any means. And so I think it is good to show that yes, he still is human. He is struggling like the rest of the trainees. The next scene in the manga really only shows about one panel and it's three of the Slayer trainees and they're leaving, they're packing up their things. The Hashira training for Gyome's section is just way too much for them and they're leaving. Not really anything is being said during the scene. Tanjiro is there, he's kind of just looking at them. He looks sad and maybe like unsure. This part was different in the anime. We got a lot more context and I absolutely loved this scene. Tanjiro stops them and he's like, well, where are you going? And the trainees explain to Tanjiro that it's just too much for them and they're gonna move to more of a supporting role so that they can support the Slayer still, be a part of it just in a different way. And in the manga, like I just said, Tanjiro doesn't say anything, but in the anime, what they added is that Tanjiro explains like, well, great, like I'm excited for you. You're still gonna be supporting us just in a different way. And the trainees are like, dang, you're right. And it looks like they appear as though they're not as sad and maybe guilty feeling as they were before. They move on, yes, and they're leaving, but they're moving on with a smile on their face because they know that they're still making a difference in helping aid for this final battle that is to come. And so again, once again, we are seeing the Tanzido effect where he is having a huge influence on the people around him. You know, it could have been so easy for Tanzido to say like, dang, you guys quit. Like, you guys aren't gonna help. Like you got so far and then you just gave up. But no, he went straight to the positive again. That's what Muichiro always says when he's around Tanjiro nowadays. He comments on the fact that Tanjiro always looks at the positive. And so I think this was a really well added scene to put in the anime that just wasn't in the manga. Next up in the anime and the manga, we are moving on to the trainees kind of eating, they're having a conversation. In the anime, we get a little added scene of seeing Tanjiro actually make the rice balls. We see this and then they have a little conversation and then we see him make more. And so this part wasn't exactly in the manga. Basically what we see at the beginning of a chapter is that it's kind of just one of those pages where it shows that Tanjiro is making the rice balls, but there's not really any context or conversation behind it. And so yes, it was in the manga as inspiration, but the anime just made it into something a bit more, which of course is something that they have been doing throughout this whole training process. And of course we see that Tanjiro is recalling old times with his family and that was super sweet. Nezuko was there, everyone was there. It was just really cute. We move on to Tanjiro struggling over the boulder again, and someone that comes to his aid is actually Genya. And this whole scene in the manga was the exact same as the anime. And this is actually where in the manga, it moved on to the Nakime scene instead of moving forward like we do in the anime. So they just kind of mixed it up from the manga to the anime, but we're still getting the exact same scenes. In the manga, this is where we end chapter 134 and we move into chapter 135. So we are progressing again very fast like we did in the last episode. In the anime, this next scene is a little added scene of the other trainees coming to Tanjiro at night and they are asking him to make more rice balls. They are calling him mom. And so in the manga, this wasn't really a scene. It was more of, again, a side panel that wasn't included in the story itself, but next to a title slot for a chapter. And it's basically just the trainees saying mom to Tanjiro. There's not really any context behind it. So again, they're adding this specific little picture that was in the manga and adding it into a scene that fits the atmosphere of this episode. We then move into probably our largest anime only content that was not in the manga. And that is a little conversation between Genya and Tanjiro. And they're just talking more about the repetitive motion that Genya was talking to Tanjiro about before. And so they're just chatting more about it, trying to figure out kind of what's going on and how Tanjiro can get past this boulder. Genya is having the big mind here and he's pondering why Tanjiro's mark is always constantly there. It's unlike the other Hashira like Gyome and which he hasn't even 
hasn't got his mark yet. He's on like Mitsuri and Moichiro where it was there and then it went away. And so I like how they're kind of pondering that a bit more than they were in the manga. They also talk a lot about their emotions. Basically this whole extra scene was just an added little bit of wholesomeness and conversation between these two boys. And it also helps set up for the next scene. We jump back to Tanjiro trying to move the boulder again. We have a couple more flashbacks of his family and of Rengoku. The Rengoku panel, his family, these were both like just like one panel each in the manga. So that was about the same as in the anime. I liked how they kept that, they added a bit more. And then Inosuke and Zenitsu were also there in the manga, but they had a bit more dialogue in the anime. And then we finish up the episode with a really cool 20-ish second little scene that was not in the manga. So this of course is Muzan. We see the camera zooming in closer to him and he's pondering what Ubiashiki is planning, what he looks like, and he's genuinely just trying to figure out this whole situation from his side of things for his goal. And that is how the episode ends. That little part was not in the manga, but of course we're adding little bits and pieces of Muzan because we know that Muzan is coming. He's looking for Nezuko. He's trying to find the Hashira, Obiashiki. So that was another really awesome scene to add in there. Then of course we end the episode with the Taisho secret. We get to learn a little bit more about Giyome and we get to learn that he's actually just a big teddy bear, a big sweetheart. He's very emotional. He loves cats. He basically just cries over everything. And so my one little critique on this episode, which isn't really too big of a deal because we literally just followed the manga, but I wish we got more of Guillaume like throughout the training. I do know that they emphasize on the fact that he doesn't really know how to teach that well. And so that's kind of why he wasn't present. So I am excited for next week's episode since he is the title of the episode. We are going to be learning more about him, which of course I know it's to come from the manga but I'm very excited. Gyome is also my personality type, so I feel like I can relate to him a lot. So I'm just genuinely excited for next week's episode. Also a big announcement for next week's episode is that it's going to be 40 minutes is what Crunchyroll has said. And so of course in the past, they have said that the length of certain episodes have been extended. And then in reality, they're actually a bit shorter than that. So I'm expecting it to be a little bit less than 40 minutes, but still we do get at least probably 10, 15 minutes of extra content than normal. So I am very excited for that. That is going to conclude my breakdown of similarities and differences between this anime episode and the manga of Manga 16. There is also a very exciting announcement for the last episode of this Demon Slayer arc and it is that it will be about an hour long. Now, again, I think it'll be probably closer to like 45 minutes to like 50 minutes, just because they do kind of dummy it down a bit. I don't really exactly know why, I've just noticed that pattern throughout. And so it'll probably be a bit shorter than an hour, but at least we're getting more content. And so at this point in my video, I have completed kind of my breakdown of everything. I hope you enjoyed, and I'm going to be moving into some spoilers for the rest of this book and kind of my prediction for what's to come next week in episode seven. And so if you have not read ahead, please exit this video, come back later if you're interested in hearing my prediction. But I'm basically going to talk about where I think episode seven is going to leave off leading into episode eight, our finale of this season. And so if you have not already left, I'm going to give a countdown for spoilers. Three, two, one. Okay, spoilers ahead. So episode seven, I think is gonna end with Muzan showing up at the Ubiashiki Manor. So basically Sanami is going to crush that eyeball, which was a really short scene that we got in the manga and then it goes straight into Muzan. I think that's how episode seven is going to end after seeing of course all of Guillaume's backstory and finishing up that training. And so I'm very excited. I think they're probably gonna add more to Muzan's arrival, if not maybe just showing like a scene or two of him at the end of episode seven. But that's where I think it's gonna end. I've texted my friends this prediction, so we'll see if I'm right next week when episode seven comes out. I am extremely excited. If you have read the manga, please let me know where you think episode seven is gonna end. I'm also going to predict when I think episode eight is gonna end next week after we see episode seven. I have a pretty good idea already. I think it's gonna be about halfway through this book, but I'll show the exact panels in a future episode. But genuinely, I'm just so excited for episode seven and eight. 
I hope you're excited as well. Let me know all of your comments if you have any questions in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time. Bye!